Okay, so someone asked me, how do you know uh, a weak acid from a strong acid? Well, the first way you know is from experience. Okay, the, the really strong acids are nitric acid, hydrochloric acid, those are the big ones. I mean, those are the very common, very strong acids. There are others. I think there's actually, can you look in the book, isn't there a chart yes. of really strong acids that I go over in the lecture for acids, right? Why don't you take that, why don't you take that chart out? So there's a lot of strong acids out there. Those are the, when I think of a strong acid that are common, I'm going to look at those. Yeah. Sarah, right? You're Phosphoric paying attention. Acid. What is it? Phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid, acid is not that strong. No, it goes hydrochloric, nitric, sulfuric, phosphoric, ethanoic, carbonic, and hydrochloric acid. So what are the top ones? The top ones are hydrochloric acid, nitric, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, and then phosphoric acid. All right, so those are the three. Yeah, those are the three. These are really big. These are big, 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 big. Okay. Did a light just come on? I feel like I'm on stage here. Hey, why did it just come on? We had a random light that came on? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, this is, um, this is still on? Yeah. So the, when I think of acids, the strong acids, those are the, the top three. Okay, there are others. However, why can you look at the Ka and tell that an acid is strong or weak? Well, this is how. Let's say I have HCl, right? Right, isn't that correct? Now, doesn't this go all the way to the right? In other words, it dissociates completely. Would you say that's true, Enzo? Hydro absolutely, right? Now, if you're going to write the Ka expression using the chemical formula equation, wouldn't you say that it's going to be H plus, molar H plus, and then chlorine over the HCl concentration equals Ka? Wouldn't that be true? Yes? Yes? Is the denominator zero? Is it? Does that have any value left? You said it's completely. And so you told me that that dissociates completely. Yeah. So how much of this are you going to have left? Zero. Zero, right? Zero. So what's in the denominator? Zero. zero. And why can't zero be in the denominator? Because the quotient, denominator, numerator, quotient. This is the quotient. What's the quotient? As the denominator approaches zero, what does the quotient approach? Zero two. No. Big number. Big number. Okay, big number. If this is one over one is one, one over a half is two, one over ten is a tenth, one over One over Zero. one over ten is a tenth, right? Yeah. One over a hundred is a hundredth. But let's say this number gets smaller. One over point five is two. One over point one is ten. One over point zero zero a hundredth is a hundred. One over a millionth. One over a billionth. One over a trillionth. What's that number becoming? Very large, isn't it? So as that approaches zero, what does that approach? Infinity. Infinity. So as that approaches zero, because that's going to go to completion, that Ka gets very large, doesn't it? But well, once it reaches zero, it exists. No, it exists. It exists. But it's undefined. We haven't defined it yet. It exists somewhere out there in the ether. It exists. It exists. You can use zero in the denominator somewhere in the universe. Somebody knows how to do it, but we don't. We're not smart enough. Humans. It's true. We haven't figured it out yet. 
Okay? That's like saying North America didn't exist pre-Columbian, you know, didn't exist. Yeah, there were people that lived there, but we Europeans said it didn't exist, right? Okay, so, but what happens if this is a, a weak acid like acetic acid? Sorry, this is, should be H+. Plus. This is going to be acetic acid, HAC. AC is just an abbreviation for C2H3O2. Is that so, the number, so the denominator is going to be bigger. So the denominator is going to be large, right? Isn't that going to be very small? Isn't it? Isn't that going to be very small? So acetic acid, for instance, is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. It's a really small number. So how do you know, by looking at the Ka, that the acid is weak? Is it, a, is it a large Ka that means your acid is weak, or is it a small Ka that means your acid is weak? Small. And why? Because the reactants are in the numerator. If not much of that ionizes, dissociates, then these, value, these values here are going to be small, aren't they? Small numerator, large denominator, Small quotient. Listen to my words. Small denominator. I'm sorry, small numerator. Small numerator. Large denominator. Small quotient. Large numerator. Small denominator. Large quotient. Clear? Are you alright with that? Now, let me do, we have time for really one. Okay, maybe two. Let's say, I'll do this exact problem if I can find it. I did this with my last class. For instance, I said, I said, I said, number one. I said, did something just flick off here? No. Or was that you? No. That we did? Okay. Then it says, to 225 milliliters of a 0.8 molar solution, of Ki, 225 milliliters, 0.8 molar. I took this volume of that solution, that volume of that solution of potassium iodide, correct? And I put it in a flask, right? So it's sitting right here. And then it says, and then the problem says, I filled this up to one liter, total. I filled this to totally one liter. What's the molarity of the new solution? Matt, are you with me? Yes, sir. Are you, are you being cooperative? Excellent. <laughs> just, just asking. Okay. Okay, so what you need to know is, you need to know, you know how much volume you have here, isn't it? Is it molarity? Isn't that defined as being the moles per liter? Isn't it? Yeah. You know the volume, it's one liter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, don't I have to know the number of moles? So in other words, how many moles are there in 225 milliliters of a 0.8 molar solution of Potassium iodide. How many moles are there? Anybody <coughs> figure out how to do that? Can anybody do that? Where did you do that? Well, what do you know? Set up, you know, if all else fails, you could use the dilution equation. There's a dilution equation, M1V1 equals M2V2. Or you could just reason it out conceptually. And you can say to yourself, well, I'm making a molar solution. I know the volume. It's 1,000 milliliters. But what's the number of moles, right? All right? Well, I know I have this volume of that molar solution. So I have, I have 0.8 moles 
in 1,000 milliliters, don't I? 0.8 moles in 1,000 milliliters, don't I? How many moles are there in 225 milliliters? So what's 0.8 times 225 divided by 1,000? 0.18. 0 0.18. Can you see this over here? Barely? No, not really. What is it? No, I'm not running low on batteries, but thank you, Matt, for being very concerned about my battery power here. Appreciate that very much. This is coming on again. I don't understand this. Okay. And it's upside down again. So 0.18 over 1,000 milliliters. So what's the molarity? What's the molarity? No. Molar solution, Jose, means Moles, moles per 1,000 milliliters. So it's 0.18 molar, right? Isn't it? No, no, I understand. You, I understand. That's fine. I understood. It's fine. Not a problem. Do you get it? Yes. Now, one more thing I did, one more thing I did um, last class was I... I said to the class, I said, well, everything all right? Yeah. All right. I just had a random student come in and do something. I don't know what they did, but everything all right over there? Everything is. Excellent. I was worried. Okay. If I have this equation, you'll have problems like this where they're going to ask you for freezing point or boiling point depression, and then they'll ask you for the new boiling point, okay? So, for instance, I know that this is going to equal Kb, that's the constant, and then times the molality, right? Right, of the solution. Now, that's great if you're talking about glucose, because, because glucose, does glucose dissociate? Does glucose dissociate? No, it doesn't. Glucose doesn't dissociate. So if I put one mole of glucose, if I put one mole of glucose particles into solution, how many moles of glucose particles are going to be in solution? One mole, right? Correct? Remember N? The reason you don't even need the N for compounds that don't dissociate is because N is 1. What's 1 times 1? One? 1. Okay? Well, what happens if I put in 2 moles of calcium chloride? How many moles of particles am I going to have if I put in 2 moles of calcium chloride? How many moles of how many moles of particles will I have? How many? Two moles? No. Because each particle, I have two moles of that particle, right? Each particle will give up a calcium and two chlorines two chlorides. So I'll have six moles. So therefore now N becomes important. What's N going to be? Six. No. N's going to be three. The number of ions. How about if I have... We're pretending this is going to completely dissociate, okay? We're pretending, okay?
What's N? Aluminum pyrophosphate. What's N? You should be able to just look at that. No, Abby? I'm being serious. You're going to say, oh, of course. You will. Everybody are going to say, oh, of course. Do you remember what pyrophosphate is? Right? So you're going to have four plus three aluminum ions and three minus four pyrophosphate ions. So you'll have seven, so N would be seven. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. Okay? We're off.